Hey guys, welcome back to Base MMA. We have an official announcement for UFC 301. Alexander Pantoja is going to be facing Steve Ursic at UFC 301. Right now, we don't know if this is going to be the main event for this card. And this is kind of pretty funny in my opinion. Like, I know Steve Ursic only has three fights in the UFC. He's ranked number 10. He's coming off that knockout over Matt Schnell. And honestly, he probably doesn't deserve the title shot. But I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I'm pretty happy about this. And the reason why I'm happy about this is because even though, like I said, he probably doesn't deserve the title shot. You know, he only has three fights in the UFC. His last two fights were actually on short notice. His debut was on short notice. His last fight was also on short notice because he was supposed to fight Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell pulled out. I don't know why this graphic doesn't want to open up. Let me refre refresh the page. Okay, it doesn't want to open up. But anyway, we have a flyway bout. We knew Alexander Pantoja was going to be defending his title on this card. We just didn't know against who. I mean, we some of us thought it might be Mohamed Mokayev, even though that performance against Alex Perez wasn't a performance that called for a title shot. It was a decision, not a very dominant performance per se. So I kind of felt like, okay, they're probably not going to give the title shot to Mohamed Mokayev. Maybe they're going to give it to Brandon Roy Val, even though I wasn't too happy about that. Look, great win over Brandon Moreno. But let's be honest, like that wasn't the best version of Brandon Moreno. I don't know what was happening with Brandon Moreno. The thing that we took away from that fight not was not how well Brandon Roy Val did in the fight, but more of like how bad and washed Brandon Moreno looked in that fight. So I feel like flyweight was in a very weird spot. I thought maybe Manel Cap could fight for the title, but then they scheduled him to fight Nicolas Nicolau. At a fight night in April. So I was like, okay, that takes him out of the title picture. So when you think about all those things that were, are happening in the flyweight division, you can see why the UFC made this fight. Steve Ursik, Michael Scott is going to be fighting Alexander Pantoja at UFC 301. And we also had a couple of fight announcements. Michelle Pereira versus Makud Muraidov. Um, Not a fight that I was expecting, to be honest. I mean, I know Pereira is coming off that knockout uh, last weekend at UFC 299. But I thought he was going to get a ranked opponent. So this is kind of a weird matchup. Anthony Smith versus uh, Vitor Petrino. Okay, interesting matchup. Not a bad matchup for the Brazil card. This fight is also not pretty It's pretty solid, I would say. I mean, not, not pay-per-view worthy, but a good fight for Brazil. Joaquim Silva versus Dracar Close. Both of these guys fight at UFC Austin. So interesting matchup there. This fight is actually a banger. I actually really want to see this fight. But UFC 301, guys, we have to be realistic. We have to be realistic and we have to, you know, calm our expectations when it comes to this card because if we're being honest, we're coming off three back-to-back -back stacked cards. I mean, UFC 298 was absolutely stacked. 299, 299, 299, 299 was one of the best cards we've ever seen. UFC 300 also stacked from top to bottom. So, you know, we, we knew this was coming. We knew that UFC 301 was going to take a hit. And to be honest, the root of this problem, the reason why this card is not going to be that great in comparison to the other cards as well is because I feel like Pereira versus Hill just made a lot more sense for the Brazil card. And the fact that they had to make that fight for 300 because Izzy and DDP weren't going to be ready because Leon and Bala, they probably didn't want to make that the main event. So because they moved Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira to 300, we knew this card was going to take a hit. And honestly... Honestly, I've been saying this on Twitter. This could have been solved very, very easily. It's, it tells you that the UFC is not good at planning for these cards because if the UFC would have, you know, made Volk versus Taporia the main event of 300, I know it's not the craziest main event. However, you give Volkanovski a little bit more time to recover from that Islam knockout, and then you could make uh, Islam Makashev defend his title against Justin Gaethje for UFC 299 because Islam Makhachev, even though he was suffering from a small injury, he said that it was only a small injury. Even though he couldn't fight in February, he could have fought in March. So I would have made Islam Makhachev versus Justin Gaethje for UFC 299. And then I would have moved O'Malley and Cheeto to UFC 298. Or you could have made Wolf versus Tapora 298 and then O'Malley versus Marlon Vera for 300. That could have still been good enough. Maybe... I mean, people are still going to be complaining because it's not Conor McGregor for 300. It's not the fight we were promised. So, I, But anyway, if they would have done that, at least you could still keep Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill for UFC 301. And at this point, 
the cards feels very weird because if Alexander Pantoja and Steve Ersig is not the main event, a Brazilian, Alexander Pantoja, like, which other Brazilian could headline the card? There's really no other Brazilian champion. You know what I'm saying? And I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if Raquel Pennington fights Juliana Pena and is the main event of this card. I I, I think it would be pretty funny. And I'm going to hot take. Brazil, you deserve this. The reason why you deserve this is because you walked out on Glover Teixeira on his, in his fight against Jamal Hill when he was giving his retirement speech. And you deserve a shitty card because of it. And I hope Juliana Pena and Raquel Pennington are the main event for this card. I think it would be absolutely hilarious. Maybe they will try to get Paulo Costa on this card. But like I said, my expectations are very, very low for UFC 301 because I have to be realistic. Like the last three cards were absolutely stacked and it's not realistic for every card to be absolutely stacked when it comes to the pay-per-views we know that some of these cards are going to take a big hit and it just made sense that UFC 301 was going to take a hit but when it comes to this matchup between Pantoja and Ursig, I love the matchup I think it's a big step up for Ursig, but you know he has good boxing very well-rounded fighter so maybe he could make something happen and he definitely has everything to gain and nothing to lose and to be honest with you guys, I'd rather see Steve Ursig fight for the title than seeing Brandon Roval or Brandon Moreno or Kai Kyle Franz or Mohamed Mokaev. So even though, you know, he's ranked number 10 and a lot of people don't know about him because he's only had three fights in the UFC and he's been on the prelims and stuff. So, I mean, I like the matchup. I like the matchup. I just... Don't think you could make it a main event. Maybe they will. Maybe they have no option but to make it the main event. But I mean, what could be the main event of this card? Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena. Or maybe they put Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades too as the main event. Even though it doesn't really make sense for it to take place in Brazil. But I mean, what do you do? Like, honestly, what do you you guys think should be the main event of this card? And what other fights do you think they could add? I mean, Paulo Costa, would that be too quick of a turnaround? Like, who else would you add on the Brazil card that would make it exciting? I mean, maybe Edson Barboza, you could add him on this card. Um, But I'm trying to think of opponents that you could... Maybe Edson Barboza versus Giga Jiketsi, if they haven't fought. Maybe you could add that fight on this card. But, I mean, right now the card isn't looking great. It's not looking great, but like I said, my expectations were already low. And this card is probably not going to sell too well. But Brazil, you deserve this. You honestly do deserve this because of how you treated Glover Teixeira. And like I said, I like the matchup. Not the matchup we were expecting. Even though, like, maybe you guys were expecting this. But I thought we were going to get a better matchup. And like I said, there's no official uh, statement from the UFC on whether this is going to be the main event or not. I think that it's not going to be the main event. But maybe it ends up being the main event. I think the UFC is going to try to get a good main event for this card i just can't think of one that would be good enough or big enough besides maybe like leon edwards's balam mohammed doesn't really make sense for the brazil card but maybe they ended up maybe they end up putting it on this card but i mean who else could be on this card i mean it would have to be a heavyweight fight i don't think you know drake is or izzy are going to come back for this card or you know so they're out of the picture lightweight islam is coming back in june Toporia isn't going to come back for this one. O'Malley just fought. So there's really not a lot of options for title fights when it comes to this card. So I think we're stuck with Bantoja Ursig. I, honestly, I think that's going to be the fight that we're going to end up seeing for this card. Maybe Aspinall, Curtis Blades. But like I said, it doesn't really make sense for UFC 301. But I also thought Alex Perita versus Jamal Hill was a fight that really didn't make a lot of sense for UFC 300. But if we know anything about the UFC is that they're terrible at planning. And they don't think about the matchups that they make and when they could come back to fight the champion like Robert Whitaker versus Drickus Duplessis. Like, why are you going to make them fight in July and then expect them to make a quick turnaround to fight early September? Like, that's not enough time for them to recover from that fight, from the injury, to go back into a training camp. It's just not realistic. So I don't understand why the UFC keeps making these kind of mistakes and then being mad and blaming the fighters why their cars are the way they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you blame the fighters if... You guys are the ones that are managing the fights. You guys are the matchmakers. You guys should be smarter in the way that you're making these fights. Like Oliveira versus Armin Suryukin, in my opinion, it wasn't a fight that made sense for 300. It was a fight that probably made sense if Islam was going to come back in June was to make Oliveira versus Armin Suryukin 
for UFC 298. And then those guys, the winner of that has enough time to turn around for June. It's a little bit more realistic. You know what I'm saying? So it's little things like that that UFC misses, which have a big impact on the cards and who ends up fighting for the title. Because now Poirier might fight for the title. Even if we're being honest, he doesn't really deserve it. You know, he doesn't really deserve it. That's the that's the truth. Even if you like Poirier, he doesn't really deserve the title shot. But the UFC is in the position they're in. Because they want to be in that position. And UFC 301. I don't think the card is that bad to be honest. I think I think there's going to be some fun matchups. I, I don't expect a star-studded card. And I think it'll be good enough. Maybe not a pay-per-view worthy card. Definitely a card that you're probably going to stream. But I mean we just got a lot of stacked cards. So I kind of expected this to be totally honest with you guys. But let me know what you guys thought of Alexander Pantoja versus Steve Ursic. Do you like the matchup? Do you think... That, you know, maybe you wanted to see somebody else fight Pantoja. Personally, I wanted to see a fresh matchup. So I'm not too mad about this. But also let me know, I mean, who do you think should be the main event? I think it should be Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena. I think it would be absolutely hilarious. But uh, I mean, I know you guys are not going to be too happy about that. But anyway, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.